Octopath Traveler. I love old school RPGs, and this is sort of that. It has the look and feel of Lunar or the Legends of Heroes games, and that's always great in my book. First off, I want to say I have not finished this game. I'm over 30 hours in, so this is sort of a snap judgment review, but not really. I understand what the game is about and how well it works. I just don't know about some of the late game surprises, as I assume and hope there are. I finished almost all the second chapters of each of the characters. My son is really looking forward to playing this when he gets back from his summer vacation, so I hope he joins me of a revisit of this review in a couple months. The game's gimmick is that it really doesn't care what you do. It's all about eight unique people and their stories. The world is open to explore in its fake 16-bit glory. I say fake because it's the style of a 16-bit game, but it's graphically way prettier than any game in that era. You start off by choosing who you want to play as. There are real differences on the people that you could pick, and you can have a real disadvantage if you pick a weaker character in the beginning. I know some people might say, well, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, but some are better than others. I wish you could change your main character after you get more than four people, but they lock it. And for a game that's all about customization, this seems like a very odd move. I started with the thief. He could use multiple weapons and had some of the most powerful moves that I have found. Even better, his steal ability in the open world is just fantastic. Fantastic. I have stolen so much stuff from villages and bosses. In fact, I might be the villain of this game. Everyone's talking about, man, that guy loves to rob people. When it comes to stealing, they give you percentage on the odds of stealing it. You'll get a 100% chance quite often. The worst that can happen if you get caught stealing too much is that you're going to have to pay to get your reputation back. That's really not that much in the long run. There are seven other characters to meet and join your party. They run down like a list of generic job types in an RPG. Like healer, warrior, mage, and so on. Picking a team that you want to take in a battle with you as a main team is very hard, but later the job systems make it way easier to customize your team to your advantage. Each of these characters has a path ability, much like the before mentioned steel. It'll show you a check mark by each of the NPCs that you've already used it on. That's actually quite helpful. Some of the path abilities were basically the same, only with little tweaks. There are a couple people that you can use to fight villagers, and two who will give you a backstory in the character you're talking to, and those backstories might actually give you something like a hidden item, a discount at the inn, or maybe something you can use in one of the side quests. But more on that later. As much as I love the aesthetics of everything I saw, this game had one of the things that kind of frustrate me in RPGs. And that's the towns making no sense. You go into towns with bunches of people. You go into their houses and there's like one bed. Where does everybody else sleep? Why not just have multiple beds in this place? Maybe there's bedrooms on the second level. Well, let's walk inside these places. Oh look, there isn't stairs anywhere. It doesn't make any sense. This house has a balcony. Do you see stairs to get to it? No. This is just a one example of the house is making no sense. I mean, why can't they make the town have enough beds for everyone they say is in it? It's just one of those things that irritate me sometimes about RPG towns. You pick a character and you go through a chapter of their story. Most of these chapters run about 30 to 45 minutes. Most of the time in the setup is like this. There's something happens, flashback, dungeon, boss, then you move on. There are actually a few chapters in some of the characters that were really different. But most of the time they kind of follow the same pattern. The stories can be quite interesting depending on the characters that you choose. I was a little bit bored by some of them as they seem too simple, but even those have layers of a story you might not expect, so you're going to want to play them out. You will travel through the land and it will show you the level of the monsters that you'll come up against, which was very helpful if you're wandering around. They don't stop you from trying to go into much more powerful areas, but they do warn you. Don't worry though, there are save spots all over the place, and it even auto-saves every time you switch screens. Now the fights in these games are interesting. They're a bit tactical in nature. The trick to surviving, or at least speeding through them, is to find out the weaknesses of the monsters that you come across. They give you helpful boxes on the screen to show you which weaknesses that you've already figured out, and it will keep the info of the enemies that you figured out in the past. There's a number in a shield that will show you how many hits of their weakness it will take to stun them. When you stun them, they're going to take more damage, and they'll lose their place in the next battle order. So that's when you're going to want to bring out your most powerful attacks, when they're stunned. You get one boost point every time your turn comes up. These boost points increase the power of your attacks or stat boosts. That in conjunction with a stun can really beat down monsters. The battles go on a bit too long. This especially goes for boss battles. Normal battles can have characters stun the same enemy two or three times before they die. It felt unnecessarily too long. It kind of dragged out the battles and that's unfortunate because I did enjoy them. This is really only an issue for the first chapter and depending on how much you grind to keep your characters at their recommended levels. I've spent about five hours grinding for levels. Unfortunately, it's necessary, especially if you intend to see all the characters' stories. 
To help you out, you get skill points that you can use to buy new skills to help beat the enemies as they unlock new attacks and buffs for your characters. Plus, there's a hidden job system which will let you give your characters secondary jobs which will let them use different weapons on the fly and new spells they didn't have access to before. I say it's hidden because it is. In order to find the secondary job for your characters, you're going to need to find a shrine. There are different shrines for each of the characters' job abilities. They wouldn't show up on the map until you actually entered them, so you kind of would have to stumble upon them. So look all around for these shrines. Trust me, battles get way better when you have different jobs to equip. Now there are side quests in the game which will show up as an orange icon on your map. There are usually a few of them in the towns that you visit. These side quests are not great. They would often tell you something and then not give you any context behind it. Usually all you have to do is find something in the town to fix their problem. But it was often not clear on what it was. More than once I just accidentally beat a side quest and that's a problem. The side quest should be way more clear on what they wanted me to do. My only other complaint about this game, and this one is minor as well, but when the characters talk to each other, it feels like the most generic conversations. It never feels like I was learning anything new. And while it was optional to watch it, the fact that the characters basically ignore each other feels like a mistake. If they make a sequel to this game, I hope there's more interconnectivity with the characters that you're playing with. I did enjoy traveling through the lands, and the music in the game in certain parts was just spectacular. And if I didn't think Nintendo would flag this video for using it, I would give you an example. But just take my word for it, the music is amazing. Octopath Traveler is a visually stunning game, and that's remarkable for a title that's trying to look like it's at home with older 90s styled RPGs. The battle system is fun and the variety of enemies' weaknesses keep things fresh and interesting. My only concern is I think the battles went on a little too long, but this gets kind of solved later in the game. It was fun to explore the world, and a sense of freedom on what stories you want to do was quite refreshing. I had a ton of fun playing this, and it's definitely worth a buy. There are hours and hours of content to play here, and you're going to want to go back and see the new things that might happen with a different character's story. Or you might want to explore the world and find some of the optional caves littered throughout it. There's plenty here for any RPG fan, so you should definitely buy it now.